Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Daniel Pineda. My name's Adele Quo. And here we go with another show in May. Holy cow, our Mother's Day show. Mother's Day. Circa 2014. Right. Mother's Day is coming up. Got those flowers and gift cards ready to go? Certainly hope so. Hope you're having a safe and uh, happy May so far. We have uh, our usual lineup. News and Community Bulletin Board, Adele is here with. It's, it's easy, easy being green. green. And our <laughs> green. New, I'm going to sing that. Yeah, one of these days. I've almost got the song worked out. I'm working on it. <laughs> Rich is here with reviews tonight. Hey, Rich, waiting hey, over Rich. there in the, in the wings. And our news for senior segment. Uh, and uh, then Miriam's got an interview, too. So that's a full show. But before we begin, here's a social media reminder. Absolutely correct. You can watch us on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. And you can also visit us on facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. So please visit us on both of our YouTube social media sites. YouTube and Facebook. Don't get no better than that. Hey, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Should we read some news? Here we go. News for Seniors Glasses, our first item. Well, remember the Columbia Pike exactly. million dollar super bus stop? The infamous high tech bus stop has been ditched for a more affordable design. Mm. New plans project 23 additional transit centers along Columbia Pike for about 40% less than uh, the previous one's cost. The total price will drop from 20.9 to $12.4 million, the cost of individual stations will be between $362,000 and $672,000 per station. Uh, you can read more about the new stops uh, at www.columbiapikeva.us and uh, check out that website. Daniel. Absolutely. Well, on May the 13th, the Arlington County Board will honor seven individuals and two teams for their outstanding service to the community. Arlington residents are invited to event to the event, which will take place during the county board's recess. The honorees are shown on your screen. The individuals are Meg Breeden, Jessica Green, Kevin Henry, Deborah Perkins Jones, Jill Kent, Jane Parham, James uh, Terpstra. Uh, the groups are talking uh, books and homebound services and vest leadership team. All right, Daniel, elsewhere in our news items, well, two Arlington High School students received awards for excellence in the arts. At the Kennedy Center last week, Rosie Petrie of Washington Lee High School and Ella Bermadette Tucson of H.P. Woodlawn each received an award for their artwork. These awards are granted every year by the National Society of Arts and Letters to outstanding high school students of the arts in the Washington area. Two other Arlington students, Katie Curlin of Washington Lee and Olivia Taylor of H.B. Woodlawn, received certificates of merit. Katie for her work and Olivia, or for her artwork rather, and Olivia for her music. So congratulations to those award-winning artists. Absolutely. Congratulations to us out to Daniel. them. Well, last week, Governor Terry McAuliffe and the State Board of Education recognized 12 Arlington schools with 2014 Virginia Index of Performance Awards. The awards recognize schools and divisions that exceed minimum state and federal accountability standards and reach excellent goals created by the governor and the board. The schools earning the 2014 VIP awards are based on student achievement and other performance indicators during the 2012-2013 school year. Congratulations uh, to the schools shown on your screen. Craig. All right, and speaking of Arlington Public Schools, in fiscal year 2013, the school system received more than $4.2 million in lottery profits from grades four grades K through 12. Barrett Elementary School teacher Joshua McLaughlin is one of eight teachers out of 1,300 statewide and 230 in Northern Virginia to receive the 2013 Virginia Lottery <coughs> Super Teacher Award. McLaughlin was given the award in a surprise presentation during yesterday's virtual school-wide assembly. The award was, was presented in front of the students, faculty, and superintendent Dr. Patrick Murphy. A fellow Barrett teacher nominated McLaughlin for the award. Winners were selected by a panel of judges. Each of the eight winners will receive $2,000 in cash from the Virginia Lottery and a $2,000 classroom credit from the supply room companies. Good deal all around. Congratulations Absolutely. to the super teachers. Congratulations. Yep. 
All right, uh, CBB, yep, CBB coming up next, right after we hear from Adele Quo, and it's easy, easy being green. green. Here's Adele. Adele. Hey, well, thank you so much, guys. It's easy being green, reducing our light pollution. So bear with me today. I've been diagnosed with asthma, allergy asthma, <laughs> in case I go into a coughing fit. But light pollution is caused by inefficient, excessive, or unnecessary use of artificial light. This affects every citizen. Consider this. For most of our history, our spectacular universe of stars and galaxies has been visible in the darkness of the night sky. Today, a bright night sky or urban sky glow obliterates the stars and most urban dwellers must travel far away from home, away from the glow of artificial lighting, to experience the awe-inspiring expanse of our Milky Way as our ancestors once knew it. More than not being able to view stars, research indicates that light at night interferes with normal circadian rhythms. The 24-hour cycle of day and night that people have used for thousands of year, years to maintain health and regulate their activities. Urban sky glow negatively impacts human health, which may include increased headaches, worker fatigue, stress, and increase in anxiety. For example, when your neighbor's bright security light directs unwanted lighting into your room of your home where it's not wanted, it may block an evening view, cause discomfort, annoyances, sleep deprivation, and lead to other adverse health effects. It is also generally wasted, polluting light. Wildlife is also harmed by the unnecessary bright night lights. The most well-known light pollution effects are on migratory birds veering off course. Bright lights distract and often disorient the birds, drawing them off course and sometimes leading them to fly into the sides of our buildings. Light pollution wastes money and energy. Lighting is responsible for a large percentage of all electricity consumption worldwide. Billions of dollars are spent on unnecessary lighting every year in the U.S. Every day is Earth Day in Arlington. Making commitments to reduce light pollution is one of them. One commitment has been to install energy-saving street lights. Imagine the power, pun intended, if each of the 107, 740 Arlington households also take steps to install energy-saving lights. So stay tuned next week for a look into how your household can take practical, everyday steps to combat light pollution. Your homework this week is to go outside one night and really look at the night sky above you. But remember, it's easy being green if every citizen contributes to reduce light pollution. Homework? Come That's on. right, homework! <laughs> I know! We're going to try well, it. Go outside, look at the night sky. There's okay. a lot of light pollution around here. There you got is. a point there. All right. Well, thanks for your... I hope Thank you, you feel better, and thanks for uh, toughing it out. Yeah. Well, let's and, get rid uh, of all the poll. Doing the early <laughs> news with us tonight. Thanks, Adele. Thanks. We appreciate it. Okay, moving right along as promised now, our CBB, or Community Bulletin Board file. Here we go. Uh, there will be a free, FRWE free, virtual small business forum focused on Virginia's Hispanic small business community. In addition, the IRS, Department of Labor and, Labor and the Small Business Administration will discuss resources and guidelines that small business owners should be aware of in order to be successful. You don't need to register, you just need to join in. That's coming up on May 15, uh, a few minutes before 10 a.m. You can visit their website, www infiniteconferencing.com slash events slash IRS and then log in using participant code and you can if you have a pen pencil you can jot this down 305-447-13 if you have email questions you can email Anna L. Falkenstein at irs.gov for an audio recording of the event uh, you can also call them for more information at 888-331-8226. And then they have a participant code for you, and that is 55, just like the IRS, 554-2910. So there you go. Hope you got all that. Absolutely. A lot, of great, <laughs> a lot of great information, Craig. Daniel. Well, May is National Bite Month, and Arlington is celebrating 
in a variety of ways. Here are just a few related events you may want to know about. The first one is beginning May the 14th, Capital Bike Share membership packages will be available at the commuter store and the mobile commuter store. Staff will be on hand to help you purchase your annual monthly or daily membership and you can get your member key fob immediately afterwards. Just visit www.commuterpage.com to learn more. Craig. All right, also in our CBB file, Bike to Work Day is Friday, May 16. The comedy will have six pit stops uh, that offer music, free food and beverages, and giveaways uh, and local exhibitors. Morning events will be held in Crystal City, on Columbia Pike, East Falls Church near the Metro Station, in Boston and Roslyn. And in the afternoon, there'll be an event in East Falls Church directly adjacent to the WNO uh, Trail. Uh, to register, visit biketoworkmetrodc.org. Get out there and bike to work, Daniel. Absolutely. Well, um, on May the 10th at 3 p.m., the Sherlington Branch Library will host Sherlington Family Movie for children and caregivers. This movie looks like it will be a lot of fun. And after his son is captured in the Great Barrier Reef and taken to Sydney, a timid clownfish sets out on a journey to bring him home. The movie is animated and features the voices of Albert Brooks, Ellen DeGeneres, Alexandra Good, William Dafoe, Brad Garrett, and Allison Janney. The movie is rated G and will be prepared to stay until 4.30 p.m. Sherlington Branch Library is located at 4200 Campbell Avenue in the village at Sherlington. So it seems like a very fun movie, right Craig? You bet. Speaking of fun <laughs> movies, uh, well, screwball comedies from Hollywood's golden age will be shown on Thursdays throughout the month of May at the Columbia Pike Branch Library. On May 15, they'll be showing The Philadelphia Story, a 1940 movie starring Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart, and Katherine Hepburn. And then on May 22nd, they'll show His Girl Friday, another 1940 movie. Cary Grant wasn't, doesn't want his ex-wife, Rosalind Russell, Rosalind Russell, rather, to remarry. And then on May 29th, their movie is The Lady Eve. That's from 1941 with Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck, directed by Preston Sturgis. All those oldies movies coming up. Get out there and check them out. Um, that's it. Okay, we'll be back with our News for Seniors file right after we hear from Nort Beckerman. And the minute. Here's Nort. Hey, Nort. Hi, I'm Nord Beckerman, the Brain Health Coach. Did you know that we frequently experience cognitive decline and blame it on age? But it could be the result of a physical problem. Any problem that interferes with the amount or quality of blood going to the brain can cause problems affecting memory, learning, reasoning, and problem solving. Diabetes and heart disease can affect memory and other cognitive abilities. Thyroid problems interfere with metabolism, which can affect the amount of fatty acid, glucose, carbohydrate, and protein going to the brain. That will affect the health and functioning of the brain. Sleep disorders will affect focus, memory, and the ability to learn. High blood pressure will damage blood vessel walls by causing inflammation, stiffness, and possible blood leaks reducing blood flow to the brain. Problems with your kidney or liver can cause confusion and memory problems. Some medications like statins can cause behavior that mimics dementia. Having memory or other cognitive problems may be due to physical health, not age. Check it out. I'm Nord Beckerman, the Brain Health Coach. I'll see you next time for a Brain Healthy Minute. Oh, it's not even using that. Oh, that was my cue. <laughs> Sorry, thanks, Nort Beckerman and his Brain Thank Healthy you, Minute. Uh, rolling right along this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. Here's Rich Masabney and his Hey, Rich, Rich. How are you, man? Thank you, boys. I uh, like the Coral Arts Society, and I knew them when Norman Scribner, for 40-some years, was their uh, artistic director. Now they got a new fellow named Scott Tucker, and I went on April 27 to see uh, them at the Kennedy Center, and makes me happy to say they just as good as ever. Uh, you can check with them at uh, coralarts.org or call 
244-3669. At the National Gallery of Art, uh, and there's an Andrew Wyeth collection there that's wonderful called Looking Out and Looking In. And the thing about uh, Wyeth died in uh, Wyeth died in 2007, but the thing about him is he was hung up on windows. That's right, windows. And if you go to the gallery, there's a million different scenes of windows, and uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it just knocks me out. Uh, uh, next week, I'll be telling you about another collection there, Degas and Cassette. Anyway, call 202-842-6353 or check the website. It's www.nga.gov. Um, the Port City Playhouse uh, in Alexandria has some real good stuff uh, called Blues for an Alabama Sky. It's an all-black cast. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, directed by Eleanor Tapskett set in adjoining apartments in 1930 in Harlem. And uh, these are the days of Adam Clayton Powell Jr., Josephine Baker, uh, Margaret Sanger. Anyway, wonderful show, wonderful actors. I'm telling you, you could, you could wrap them up and take them downtown and work, work at the Kennedy Center. They're that good. Anyway, uh, the place, City Playhouse is at 1819 North Quaker Lane, which is just above Sherling, the Sherlington Village. Or check their website, uh, portcityplayhouse.org. Now, the Little Theater of Alexandria, one of my favorite places, they're doing Boeing, Boeing. Uh, and it's directed by one of the best local directors around town, Golan Bradford Gomez. He tells, he first saw this show, he said, in the early 60s. And he said, I'm going to someday uh, direct it. Well, he finally did. It's, it's a, a, a delightful show. Uh, it's about a guy who doesn't believe in getting married, but he gets engaged at the same time to three different beautiful women who are stewardesses with different airlines. And uh, he, uh, he juggles these gals, and then he has a pal who comes in uh, named Robert uh, uh, who drops in for a visit, and then he's carrying on with the girls too. Really, a fun show. Uh, Little Theater of Alexandria, you can call them at 703-683-0496 or check the website, thelittletheater.com. Good stuff. And that's till May 24. Uh, Constellation Theater, that's up there at uh, 14th and T Street at the Source Theater. Uh, only Constellation Theater, in my opinion, does mythical tales as they have in the past. They did Metamorphosis, and, and they do Ramayana, they did Ori Estari, all, all this are, are, are mythical stuff. Anyway, now through May 25, they're doing The Love of the Nightingale, uh, about two loving sisters, uh, uh, and these are two strong women. The, the classic Greek tragedy, which we're talking about, was first created by Sophocles. Sophocles, did I say it right? Sophocles. Sophocles, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. right. Uh, in uh, 415 B.C. I, I missed all that. I was in the tub at the time. And then retold by Ovid uh, in 8 B.C. Anyway, uh, they do stuff like that that nobody else does. And there's dueling swords. There's everything else. Anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's something you might want to see. It's uh, at uh, 202, 204. 7741, or check the website, Constellation Theater, that's with an RE, dot org. It'll be there through May 25. Now, finally, uh, when you walk some, into some restaurants, you know right away it's going to be good. I had that feeling about uh, the district chop house and brewery down on 7th Street and E. Uh, it's, uh, it's a busy place, but uh, as you can expect, uh, a chop house, they got beef that won't quit. Now they, I mean, all kinds of uh, five different cuts of, of steaks and, and prime rib. You like prime rib, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. You bet. Uh, yeah, you bet. Uh, anyway, they got, they got also seafood, everything else. They, they give me the thing to get, I was starting to get hungry. <laughs> Bill Rawl is the, is the guy, he's amiable general manager. Anyway, the number is 202-347-3434, and the website is www.chophouse.com. That's it for me. Thank you.
Thank cool. you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Rich. We made Top of please. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving right along now, our News for Seniors segment, an abbreviated News for Seniors segment tonight. Uh, there really is no such thing as a simple will. Attorney Christopher Guest will discuss the compliments, I'm sorry, components of a will and how to avoid hidden traps that can cause problems. His presentation will take place Monday, May 19, 1 in the afternoon at Culpeper Garden Senior Center. Attorney Guest will talk about the classes that should be in every will. I'm sorry, the clauses that should be in every will. This is a free Duffel Air FRW free program. To register, give Culpepper Garden a call at 703-228-4403. And as always, thanks to Judy Misabney of OSAP for helping us out and sending us these announcements. We'll be back uh, with a quick bye-bye if we have time right after we hear from Miriam Gennari and her guest. Here's Miriam. Hey, Miriam. Thank you. This is Miriam Gennari, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. I'm here with Jerry Lynn Andrews. She is the chairman of the Senior Adult Council here in Arlington. And then Cindy Miller is the treasurer for the same group. Thanks for joining me, ladies. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Well, I, I, first, before we even get started on the interview, I just want you to take a message back to all the wonderful seniors here in Arlington to thank them for all the hard work and volunteering they do here in Arlington. And so one of the things that we're really grateful for is that there are great programs to attract seniors to not only stay in Arlington, but move here. Gerilyn, tell me a little bit about your work on the council and how you're trying to attract more seniors into the programs. Well. Um, Arlington County, through the Office of Senior Adult Programs, offers a wide range of things for seniors. Specifically, our sports and fitness program is fantastic. We have over 53 hours of classes a week. Sports and Sport, fitness, active that's stuff. sports, okay. active stuff. We have yoga, we have Pilates, we have aqua classes, and we also have sports programs. We have pickleball, we have golf, we have ice skating, we have biking. Co-ed volleyball? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> and, and Cindy, you're, you're very active in the aquatics program. How often do you, do you go to the aquatic center and where's your favorite one? Well, actually I have two classes. I have a deep water swim class on Mondays at uh, Yorktown. Mm -hmm. And then I have another class that uh, is a combination of shallow water and deep water on Wednesday mornings over at uh, WNL. And uh, I have been over to Wakefield. Which I haven't had a class there yet, but I would like to sign up for one because there's fabulous programs over there as well. So now to become a member of the senior adult programs, it's only $20. Correct. For the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then what about to attend individual classes? Uh, the cost is $4 for each class, and uh, I consider that absolutely a bargain. Most of them you sign up for a two-month period. Okay. So it's not an exorbitant amount of money. A few of them during the year are four-month periods. And we have a few that are drop-ins that are just so popular that the county can afford to just collect as they go. Uh, we have a, a full fitness exercise that attracts about 35 people. So we... Is it weekly. well attended? Weekly. Yeah, 35 a week Wow. in one session. So you can afford to run that one as a drop-in. So now, as a member of the council, you kind of look at Arlington and, and you have an overview of what's happening and how to, to branch out and, and um, you know, consider different offerings. But each uh, senior center has their own council. So mm -hmm. how do, how do the, the different groups kind of uh, design their programs? Well, we have several senior centers in Arlington. Each one has an advisory committee. And each advisory committee has a member on, on our council. The Sports and Fitness Committee also has a member on the council, and the Travel Committee does. So we get input from all over Arlington and from all the interest groups. So we feed it on up. So, and my understanding is that enrollment is growing. You're up, you yes. said, 11%? Last year we grew 11% in fitness programs, wow. just in fitness. So no cutting programs for seniors because oh, it no. is a growth market here. Uh, the fitness programs have grown immensely since I started in them. Where there used to be three aqua classes a week, there are now, I think, seven. Wow. Where there used to be two Pilates classes a week, there are now six or seven. And now I know we talked earlier and you were saying that women tend to attend more of the classes, but there are a large number of men who participate mm -hmm. and um, they like to work out in the gym. Are there special gym hours for seniors? 
Uh, yes, on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and again on Saturdays, uh, at least during the week, the hours are 7 to 11 in the morning. We have a trainer on board, uh, wow. which is the key to the whole program, we believe. And uh, so if someone's afraid of a machine, you don't need to be afraid of a machine. They, they're there to help you. So you can do some individual working out, but men can also enjoy golf, pickleball, mm -hmm. and I already mentioned co-ed volleyball with you know, mm -hmm. um, this is this is one of those situations where everybody's really welcomed to yes. participate and encouraged, right? Yes. We're a very friendly group. We welcome newcomers. We know our regulars. So if you walk in, several people are going to say, hi, are you new? Welcome. We're glad to have you. Well, and that's what you really need when you retire. You need to kind of be pulled into an atmosphere that where you can be more social um, and, and enjoy new friendships, right? Yes, definitely. Now, you have a big event coming up to, to celebrate Senior Fitness Month. Tell us a little bit about that. Next Wednesday at Walter Reed Senior Center, we are having Fitness Day. Okay. We start at 9 in the morning. We go to 3.30. There are a wealth of classes that will be offered in 30-minute intervals, so you can come try something out. If you've thought, gee, I've never tried Tai Chi, I've heard about it, but I'm not willing to sign up for a class, come try it. Oh, okay. Come try yoga. So it's, it's, a, it's a sampler. Well, and it's free. It's so funny that last last year, I think it was, when I went to uh, the county fair, there was a, a flash mob dance, mm -hmm. and I think the seniors were doing Zumba. What a dance. <laughs> we have Zumba classes for you seniors. Do. You do. Oh, yes. Okay. And I, I also noticed that on the list of offerings on the 14th, um, kickboxing yep. mm -hmm. and kickboxing. Um, yoga. Yes. Yep. Okay, so pickle, whatever, pickle whatever your interest is, it's yes. not just an opportunity to come and work out, but you can come feel it out yes. and check mm -hmm. things out. And now Jennifer Collins, who works for the county, mm -hmm. is, is always happy to take suggestions, but um, is she a good person to reach out to if you have any yes, questions? Yes, definitely. She's the person who designs the program, she implements the program, she helps people find the right class for them. And also, we have to thank our wonderful Judy Misabney for every week oh, yes. telling the Arlington <laughs> Weekly News so that we can tell viewers about what's happening for seniors. Yes. All right, well, excellent. I want to thank you, ladies. I want to encourage you to have a fantastic event and come back and tell us how it went. And I want to thank everyone for watching the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Miriam Gennari, and that is the Sustainable Scoop. All right, thanks, Miriam. Thank you, Miriam. And uh, before we go, just a quick reminder: our very own Rich Masabni is going to be on NPR Whamu yeah. this Friday, eighty-eight point five, eighty-eight point five, one o'clock in the afternoon, talking to Rebecca Shear on yeah. Capital Connection. Yeah, good, good job, Rich. On, it's repeated we'll that Saturday morning at seven. Take us with it when, when you hit it big, will you? Okay. <laughs> all right. That's uh, about a wrap for this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. Thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, you. Next yep. week, if you're there, whether or not you're there, we'll be here. Have <laughs> we'll a safe week. Take care. Bye-bye. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Hi, Mom. Mom.